Welcome to Hey Las Vegas. I'm your host, Broar Frederick, the voice of Las Vegas, bringing you all the latest news, updates, information, rumors, and the occasional what the actual F. So if you love Vegas the way I love Vegas, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and especially hit that bell button so you never miss an episode. We got a lot to cover today, and we're going to get right into it right after this. Welcome back. We're here at the Mirage right now because our first story is indeed about the Mirage. In case you've been living under a rock for the past 24 hours and didn't hear that the Mirage has indeed been sold, the operations of the Mirage, to the Hard Rock, that's what happened. It didn't make it into the episode, the news episode I put up a couple of days ago. It was late breaking news. So yes indeed, Operations of the Mirage has been sold for $1.1 billion to Hard Rock International. Now, what are the plans for this place? Well, they plan on a complete and utter remodel of everything. The hotel itself will probably be leveled. They're gonna replace it with a giant guitar-shaped uh, uh, rooms and suites and various other things. This is a large property, believe it or not. It's, it's very expansive, so what their plans are, they haven't produced a perspective yet, but indeed, they do plan on some type of guitar motif. Will the volcano stay? I don't know, does it fit with their brand? Probably not, so we could probably expect that to go away. Now, one thing I did like about the Mirage, and you can go and look at that video, I'll put a link in the description, is that when they reopened after the shutdown, instead of furloughing everyone like a lot of the properties did and do bringing in new hires that cost them less, they brought back all their old employees that have been here for 20 years. So shout out for them, to them for doing that. Now the Hard Rock wrote a letter to the employees that are currently here and said, we, Hard Rock International welcomes you to the Hard Rock International family. So to me, that's indicative that they'll probably keep them on to the best of their ability. So I hope that does happen. Now the Mirage, I have mixed feelings about the whole thing, but this town, I've seen so many changes over the years. You know, what's come, what's gone, the dunes, the original Sahara. It, you know, it just, the town is always in flux and yeah, you get sentimental. I mean, the Mirage ushered in the era of the luxury resort here on the Las Vegas Strip. So it's kind of a big deal that they're going to be going away, but things always change here in Las Vegas. So we welcome the Hard Rock. Now, when is this going to take place? They said it could be up to three years before we see any changes. So they're going to take over operations of the casino and it'll probably stay the same for quite a while before it goes into any type of construction phase because the construction phase is going to be massive this place is going to be shut down it's probably not going to exist as we know it any longer and that's going to induce traffic there's going to be a lot of issues so that they're going to have to get their ducks in the row before that happens so if you're a uh, MGM, you have your player's card and everything, uh, nothing's going to change anytime too soon. Now, whether they're going to bring the points over from your MGM to the Hard Rock, that remains to be seen. I'm here right now at the Mirage, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to a few people I know, and I will find out specifics. But there you have it, the big story of the past 24 hours. The Mirage, the operations of the Mirage has indeed been sold to Hard Rock International. This next story is really exciting news if you're into sports, especially if you're a football fan. It's been announced that the Super Bowl, the 2024 Super Bowl, will indeed be played right here in Las Vegas. Whoa, that's a big deal. Our Legion Stadium just recently opened. They're into their first season after the shutdown, and we've already been picked to host the 2024 Super Bowl. That is enormous. What it's gonna do for the town in terms of bringing people here, revenue generated, 
putting us firmly in the sports map is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Now, 2024, now try to get a room. <laughs> if you're going to put that on your calendar, because try to get rooms well in advance if you're not coming here, even if you are, for the Super Bowl, because the room rates are going to be nuts. I'm considering putting my house on uh, Airbnb. I could probably get 10, 20,000 a week. It's going to be bonkers in here. The other thing that's going to be bonkers is the traffic. So, you know, be prepared for what's going to take place when the influx, a huge influx of people are coming here for the Super Bowl. It's going to be mayhem, but it's going to be exciting mayhem. So I'm going to see what the whole deal is with that. You know, see if we can do some behind the scenes. But yet again, that's about two years out. But that is ginormous news for the town of Las Vegas and the Las Vegas Strip. Next up, we have none other than Las Vegas resident O.J. Simpson. Love him or hate him, he's been freed from his parole obligations as of today. So he was an early release from parole. He no longer has to report. According to the powers that be, he did his time, he did his parole, he did it well. So he is a free citizen here in Las Vegas, and you do indeed see him all over. He got into a couple minor scuffles around town since then, but you know, they were basically around paparazzi and things like that. But they say that he's been a model citizen, a model parolee, so he's gotten early release. So expect to see OJ Simpson at a Buffalo machine next to you. And I'm glad you stuck around to the very end because as you already know, this is when I do the What the Actual F segment. And for What the Actual F, it's coming from an MGM property where I happen to be right now. Now, what MGM Properties is doing with new hires, when you go online and you apply for a new job here at the MGM Properties and throughout the country as well, you have the opportunity to put on 3D goggles, uh, what is it, ocular or whatever they are, and get a feel for what it's like to do the job that you're applying for. So you're gonna be a cocktail waitress, you put this on and you walk around with your virtual tray and take dollars and bring me my coffee, milk, extra sugar, all the rest of that. If you're stocking shelves, you're gonna virtually stock shelves. The whole thing, they got it all figured out in, in a virtual environment, all the jobs that they have available for people to take. Okay, um, to one degree, I understand it because I've employed a lot of people over my various careers and businesses. In fact, I had a guy once that was a helper and I yelled down to him, hey, See that orange extension cord down there? Plug it in for me. And he went to the orange extension cord. And plugged it in. So I understand from their perspective that um, it costs a lot of money to train people. So they don't want to take the time a month to train someone, two months to train someone, even a week to train someone for a job that they might not be a good fit for. I get all that, but the thing that makes my head explode is the fact that as a society, as a workforce, the direction that people are going, especially the younger generations, yeah, I'm pointing at you, um, if you apply for a job, that means you need to work. That means you need money. That means you want to start a career. So do you just go to work. You know what the job entails. If it says cocktail waitress, you make a decision. Do I want to be a cocktail waitress? Even if you don't want to be a cocktail waitress, you want to make some ducats in your pocket. So go to work. You need to go to a, a, a virtual reality and go into the safe room and, and wonder if this job is for you. Go to work. <laughs> Start your career. What are you going to do? Sit in your mom's basement until you're 30? Come on. You're going you're gonna to keep uh, 
you know, splitting rent with other people till you're 40. Come on, just start your career. You know what you're getting into. It's a job. Go to work. You don't need, you know, a, a virtual simulation of what the job that you chose to apply for is all about. Just go to work. Be a productive human being. And that's all I got to say about that. So I want to thank you for joining me for this episode of Hey Las Vegas. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and like, share, subscribe. Hit that bell button so you never miss an episode. They come out once a week on Mondays. If there's something else like today, I'll just put it out and keep you up to date. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can go ahead and do that with Patreon. Get a channel membership or click on any of the links in the description below. And on that note, bro, Frederick out. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.